this meeting was going to be, and my hat goes off to all of the organizers of Cielo. Uh, I represent a company called Cactus Communications, but our flagship brand is a brand called Editage, and what we do is English language scholarly editing services on behalf of authors and journals. We do uh, transcription, translation, uh, Portuguese to English, Spanish to English, and uh, we do a lot of workshops, editor training, author training. But the primary emphasis of what we do is helping authors get published. I often say that the world is so flat, it's actually starting to curl. And it's, it's a good metaphor because what's really happening is everything left the US and Europe and went in globalization. And now, now the world is curling back and what is coming out of the South or what is coming out of Asia is really impacting how we publish uh, and the pressures that journal editors are facing uh, is coming from what I refer to or will refer to as a tsunami of information coming out of Asia and Latin America. Uh, so I was scooped on my heat map, uh, but uh, the, the science research was very US European centric. And while this in 2001 represents the actual number of publications, there's another heat map and this is where science growth is happening and the, where North America was the juggernaut of the numbers of publications, the growth in the numbers of publication is shrinking. And what is happening is particularly Asia, India, South Korea, Brazil, they are defining the new heat map. And this is the tsunami that I'm talking about. These are publications that are coming from non-English speaking aspects of the world and will lead to a burden, if they are not already, on the peer review processes, the administrative processes of journals, and things of that nature. Uh, so we've seen some of these curves, and in this case, uh, you have, whoops, you have uh, the publications of the US declining proportionally, this is a percentage of the whole, publications of China increasing, expected in and around 2013, 2014, the number of publications coming out of China alone, impact factor two and above, will surpass that of the US. It's a new world, it's a brave new world. On the BRIC nations, uh, China almost vertical, this is uh, 2011, 2013, 2014, this curve virtually is vertical and there's a lot of reasons for that. But uh, Brazil is, is showing phenomenal growth and India and other of the BRIC nations are as well. So while the, um, while the tsunami is coming, I honestly believe that we're only seeing the first swell of the tsunami. The first swell is coming out of Asia. The second swell is gonna come out of Latin America. The third swell is gonna come out of Africa once funding and research uh, takes place. So while publishers are being worried right now about this, what I call tsunami, uh, it's only starting. And we have to figure out processes and ways to be able to manage this workload. And it isn't just by the number of journals, it's by more efficient processes and better ways of doing things. There's a great book by uh, Philippa Benson and her colleague Silver called What Editors Want. And in the first uh, part of the book, they say, unfortunately, neither the researcher's fascination with their work nor their desire for a clear-cut recipe for success in publishing is of much help in actually getting published. You know, the fact that you want to publish does not mean that you're going to be able to get published, and many people need a lot of help. They may not have the discipline. They may need the author coaching. They may need to understand the research integrity and ethics surrounding a appropriate publication. And I'm here to say that anything that you can do that makes the job of the journal editor or the job of the peer reviewer easier makes the manuscript more attractive. These are the two gatekeepers. The journal editor and the peer reviewer are the two gatekeepers in the publication process. You make their job easy and your manuscript is much more attractive. You make their job easy and the efficiencies of publication are gonna become much more cost effective. So, but journal editors and reviewers have biases, and we all know that. There's a, a byline bias, an institutional bias related to the byline, geographic bias, language bias, integrity, and ethics biases, methodology biases. There's biases everywhere, 
and these, these pollute our head as to how to select an appropriate paper for publication. And by the time that a journal editor or reviewer has read just the title and the abstract, bias has already set in. And unfortunately, bias is really a byproduct of scientific scrutiny. I honestly believe that. It's just human behavior. But how do we overcome that bias? We overcome that bias by understanding it, first of all. We do a lot of research at Editage unrelated to our actual commercial activities, and we collect a lot of data. So this was a, a, a study on East Asian author submissions, and we asked 54 journal editors of Western journals, North American and European journals, um, whether Asian authors and papers uh, around uh, compliance with ethical guidelines, whether um, their submissions were better or worse, and very clearly, uh, uh, s some people thought they were better, but the vast majority thought a East Asian submissions were worse. But worse. But what's more concerning for this population, this audience, is that 35% of submissions from all non-English speaking countries are similar. That's an unfair bias. But that's a real perception in the Western journal editor's mind is that if it's non-English speaking, if it's from a non-English speaking country, if it's from a, a non-US uh, European centric country, that somehow there's ethical guideline issues. And that's, that's a wrong bias. There's also a quirk, a quirk of the English language. And uh, I can read this. You may not be able to. But you don't have to be really smart to read this. In English language, it doesn't matter in what order the letters are in a word. The only important thing is that the first and last letters are positioned in the right place. The rest of the letters can be jumbled, and you can still read it without a problem. This is because the human brain does not read every word. Anyway, sorry about that. It timed out. But you get the point. Does, uh, every, and this is the actual thing, so I'll just keep reading every letter by itself. But it looks for sentence and language patterns. That's a real phenomena. So how can you possibly see typos and other things if, if in fact, your word processor is not doing it? How can you see logic issues in your own language? And, and if you're handicapped further by English as a second language. So common reviewer criticisms, and I'm not going to read them all in the interest of time, and this presentation I make available to anybody. They can come by our booth, and we'll take your name and email address. I'll email you the presentation. Uh, the information is quite relevant. But if you, if you go through all of these typical common reviewer criticisms, they are all about the structure of the manuscript. There's not enough time spent on the quality of the science. The reviewers are spending all their time on the mundane things of structure, trying to make sure that the manuscript looks well for the journal. Um, so the, the, with the impact of the tsunami and administrative challenges of manuscript triage and other things, we can't fix the tsunami, but we can, we can work towards fixing the submission process. And my argument is you know, the role of professional editing service uh, how can they help the authors get the work published? Is there a place for manuscript screening services? Is there rationale for commercialized peer review? Uh, where should efforts be placed? And, and so we do a lot of data collection on this. And the studies that I'm going to hone in on specifically talks about how language editing can help minimize the time of peer review. But we've done other things. We've looked at instructions for authors. And we won best poster at Council of Science Editors. But more recently, we've looked at how a manuscript editor for a non-English speaking author can fix manuscript issues and reduce the amount of reviewer time on that manuscript. So we analyzed well over 1,000 peer reviewer comments in 72 manuscripts. Um, again, I won't go into the details, but we broke it down into, uh, we, we eliminated several of them. Uh, mundane things and we broke it down and looked at the manuscript sections and the error categories that were um, defined by the uh, by tagging or whatever for the peer reviewer comments and then we did some Spearman rank correlations uh, and what we found was error categories primarily uh, surrounded incomplete reporting a grammatical writing quality unclear reporting these are things that an editor can fix. The reviewer should not be spending their time looking at these things. And 
The distribution we found was clearly in the message section, figures and tables and results. Well, figures and tables, that's the editor's job, the author's editor's job, not the journal editor's job. This is the author editor's job. And if an author editor can help an author fix these things, then it is alleviating the pressures of the peer review. It is uh, reducing the amount of time taken for peer review. And we did a pretty sophisticated calculation here, and I won't go into it, but again, the presentation is available, and, and uh, also clarify that uh, Clorinda, uh, th this work was not done by me, but uh, people in, my, in the office, and is going to be published in Learned Publishing very shortly. Um, but the take home message is where these asterisks are, are where by um, uh, ranking, it shows to be that this unclear reporting is a significant issue in the introduction. The uh, incomplete reporting is a significant issue in figures and tables. And so uh, I highlight the areas that the data shows where these are, um, where the mentions by the reviewers were of great number and were of significantly great, greater number than any other mentions. And if all these things happen to be easy fixes by an author's editor, again, the, uh, the, um, the uh, peer reviewer should not be spending their time doing this. And so an author's editor, in addition to checking grammar, writing quality, and style of manuscripts they edit, should also point out instances of incomplete, unclear, uh, unclear reporting, et cetera, et cetera. Special attention to be paid to ensure that the figures and tables are consistent but not redundant to the information presented in the text. These, this is the role of the author editor and it's easy to fix. Um, a, a qualified editor uh, in helping an author in these aspects before submission will allow peer review then to focus on the validity of the science and the novelty of the study and thus an author's editor can indirectly help expedite the peer review process. And so, well, you know, we offer these services, other people offer these services. I'm here to show empirical data that there is value in these services. And um, we at Editage are very much looking to work with Cielo, uh, as Solange was uh, mentioning yesterday with respect to vendor certification processes. We're looking forward to being vetted as a vendor for Cielo. And uh, I hope to see more of you and Cielo in the future. Thank you.